So having looked at all those different examples of born Haber cycles, um, the last little bit we've got in your notes specific to last enthalpy is this bit in the bottom top of page 7, where we've kind of got some theory questions about values of last enthalpies. Um, so we've talked about the idea that last enthalpies generally are endothermic, because it requires you to put energy into them to break the last apart into separate gaseous ions. And generally the values are quite big, it takes quite a lot of energy to break apart an ionic lattice. This little section is just about comparing the values of last enthalpies between different ionic compounds and trying to explain why some values might be bigger than the other. So the top of page 7 says we've got two factors to worry about. So two factors which can influence the size of your last enthalpy. The first factor is about size. So the smaller the ions are, the larger the last enthalpy. And the second factor is charge. The higher the charge in the ions, the larger the last enthalpy value. The second one's hopefully a wee bit easier to understand, but the first one can cause a wee bit of issue. It says here, the smaller the ions are, the more tightly packed they are in their lattice, leading to a greater attraction to each other, leading to a larger um, last enthalpy value. So the idea that having a greater attraction between ions leads to a larger last enthalpy value is hopefully not too controversial. In other words, the stronger the attraction, the more energy you have to put them in, the more energy you have to put in to break that attraction apart. What's maybe a wee bit harder to follow is the idea that the more tightly packed the ions are, the stronger the attraction. If you think about this example up here, so this isn't the full last, this is just two ions attract each other. They've two different scenarios here. They've got the same charge, so 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus. But here the ions are much smaller than these ones. The effect of that is we would say that these two ions are more tightly packed. They've got much more uh, surface area in contact with each other which allows them to feel each other's attraction a bit more strongly. Whilst these ones have the same charge, there's actually a much smaller area of contact between them. They're less tightly packed, therefore the 1 plus 1 minus charge isn't felt as strongly by um, each other than in the first case. It's a similar idea to the idea of charge density we looked at in um, group 2. We'd say these ones have a higher charge density because they've got more area in contact with each other. Second factor is about charge. It's a simple fact that the higher charge on the ions, the, the greater the attraction. If you compare a magnesium 2 plus ion to a sodium plus ion, the 2 plus ion exerts a larger electric attraction to ions around it. Therefore, it's harder to pull that attraction apart. Therefore, a larger last enthalpy. So looking a bit more kind of in context about what could maybe come up in um, questions about explaining these differences, we've got two examples here. First one, explain why the last enthalpy for sodium chloride is plus 776, while the last enthalpy for sodium fluoride is plus 915. So the key strategy here, which I've done already, is you want to look at the different ions you've got in these lasses. NaCl is made up of Na plus and Cl minus. NaF is made up of Na plus and F minus. So looking at our two factors, hopefully we can see that it's nothing to do with charge. Everything's got a 1 plus or 1 minus charge. There's no differences between the last in terms of size of charge. Therefore, it must be due in terms of size. Um, however, sodium is in both lasses, so it can't be anything to do with the, the positive ion because it's the same in both, case, both cases. Um, it must be due with the negative ion. These are both in group 7. Fluoride is at the top of group 7. Chloride is one below it. Therefore, the chloride ion must be slightly bigger than the fluoride ion. So going along with what we said at the top here, if we've got a bigger ion, chloride, the ions in its lattice must be less tightly packed. And if they're less tightly packed, there must be a smaller attraction, leading to a smaller a smaller value for last enthalpy, which is what we see. The value for sodium chloride is smaller than the value for sodium fluoride. So in terms of um, writing that down for an explanation, just a couple of bullet points we would say. The F minus ion, the fluoride ion, is smaller than the chloride ion. Therefore, the ions in sodium fluoride are more tightly packed, leading to a greater attraction. And that greater attraction means it means it takes more energy to break that glass apart. Um, so therefore, larger value of lattice enthalpy. Second problem, 
Explain why the last entropy for magnesium chloride is plus 2492, while the last entropy for magnesium oxide is plus 3888. So if we compare our ions in this case, we've got Mg2 plus Cl minus versus Mg2 plus O2 minus. So this one is actually due with um, sizes of charges. Again, magnesium is the same in both, case, both cases, but the anion is different. We've only got a Cl minus charge here, we've got an O2 minus charge here. The higher the charge on your ions, the greater the attraction, therefore it takes more energy to break them apart. And we see that in the values. When we've got 2 plus 2 minus, we've got a larger value for last entropy than just a 2 plus 1 minus interaction. So simple enough to explain that one. The oxide ion has a greater charge than the chloride ion. So therefore the ions in magnesium oxide um, experience a greater attraction. Therefore, a larger value of lattice enthalpy.